Hey, good morning. It's Rob Raven Tactical here. Um, just going to discuss a few things about the Afghanistan Part 2, I guess. I mean, just watching the President's speech, just watching the angry side of things that I think everybody feels. And it's it's not that it's... Ooh, I, don't think, I don't think veterans blame themselves. And I don't think the people who or they're blaming themselves. They're angry with the situation. And they're angry because they feel like their service didn't matter. And I agree with that. Like, I feel like whatever we did didn't matter. We didn't make a difference. And that's tough. And I feel like everybody in Korea and Vietnam, and maybe even in the Gulf War, like Iraq and all that, like, we, we didn't do anything. You know, it didn't matter. But now we're watching this unfold. And you're watching basically... Benghazi 2.0, but instead of, you know, third, you know, maybe 50 people, we're abandoning 10,000, and that's terrible. Some things that came through, they were offering and telling people that the American citizens were going to have to factor only up $2,000 and sign a loan agreement that they would pay $2,000 to get out of the country, yet the refugees can pile on a plane and now we're gonna pay them for the rest of their lives. When they found out, and the news kind of basically pumped that information out, the $2,000 got rescinded. They were talking on, during Biden's speech, they were talking about how you just gotta make it to the airport, show your multi-pass, and then you're good, because the Taliban respects your multi-pass. No, they don't. About a day or two later, you see in the news that they basically said, um, hold in place, we can't guarantee your safety to the airport, and it's not working. So, I don't know what to tell you, and they don't know what to tell you either. So it's kind of one of those deals where you're going to go, okay, you can't leave your place, they pulled out too fast, and now you can't get to the airport, and even if you get to the airport, it's such chaos that there's no guarantee that you'll even get on a plane. And we have till the end of August, so the 31st is a Tuesday if I'm correct, Monday, Tuesday, and that's it. So you have seven days from now, roughly, to get 10,000 plus people out, plus all the refugees that they want, plus all the remaining military, and we abandon all that equipment. I, I don't know. I mean, at what point do you think we lost? Like, at what point do you think that this, which is one event, is going to have consequences all the way for the next 20 plus years? One, you empowered an entire group of people who are terrorists with not only weapons, ideology, and the fact that they defeated the great American devil, right? And that's what they call us. And they defeated us. We lost. There was no win. This is not a victory. This is not a good thing. We are walking away from a country that needed help. And I think that's the thing. You know, you go to these countries, you destroy everything, and then you promise them that, yeah, we'll be here, we'll be your ally, and then you pull out where it's convenient for you. Do I think that we should always do this kind of thing? Or to be the world's police? No. I think it should be a selective critical think or critical thought process like why do we go here here's the pro uh, problems that we're going to see here's this and this but hey we went to war much like Japan much like Germany and we turned it into a permanent station uh, the other side of it too is I look at it like the refugee side right where are they going to go you know and then I'm curious on the vetting process. I know they're going to have a vetting process to an extent. But these people, other than interpreters, probably in our old English speaking. And what do you do with them at a certain point? You know, are we going to just unload them on the American population, which is most likely? And what's it costing us? Probably billions of dollars. But yet our, our own people, they're going to be... Our own people are going to be left behind, and that's the reality. There will be no plan for it. 
the really disappointing thing is, like British SAS, French, and German special forces are all doing the right thing. Going out, guns up, locked and cocked and loaded, and going out and getting their own people. Our 82nd Airborne Commander or Divisions Commander is basically trying to tell them to not do it. So stay here because they're going to ruin the relations with the Taliban. And they told them to piss off, which is amazing. Marines at Cabal, or yeah, yeah, Cabal, were witnessing uh, the Taliban shooting women and children. Marines, our Marines, shot them. And then the same kind of command is telling them that they need to put their guns down. They're trying to punish the Marines for doing it. The population there, they're getting murdered. They're getting stabbed. The Taliban are raping children. They're going around kidnapping things. They're killing men. They're killing women. If you're not wearing the right uniform for them. <laughs> and it's over, folks. You basically gave a caliphate back to a group of people who want you dead. And now thousands and tens of thousands or millions of relatively innocent people are going to suffer and die all because of it. And we're going to suffer for it. And it's just an unattended consequence of it. It's Brave and Tactical signing off. There's really nothing good that's going to come from this. Um, have a great day. Um, be prepared. Be minded. And again, be prepared for the consequences of what this is going to happen. Much like our government abandoning, abandoning them in Afghanistan, they're not going to be there for you here when everything goes wrong. Signing off.